Hi everyone, this is a short video on the features of the code syntax add-on for Google Slides. There are a few menu items in the add-on, colorize, colorize slide, colorize selection and change mode. Colorize and colorize slide are pretty much the same except that the first one goes through your whole document whereas the colorize slide only looks at the current slide. Um, let's uh, show the colorize menu item by, um, by writing a little bit of text. So here we want to show inline code spans. Um, code spans are sections of your text that are delimited by single backticks. And these can be in your main uh, document, in your main text box, but they can also be in pretty much any shape. So here I will insert an arrow and then uh, add a little bit of text into that one as well. And when you now run the extension, either colorize uh, the whole document or, or the slide, it will go through all the um, items on your on your slide and then replace code spans with uh, um, colorized uh, entries. And depending on the content, it might also change the color. I mean, it's always a yeah. It's always going to be a either blue or green or similar colors. The other feature that Colorize provides are code blocks. And for that, I will start by, with a new text box. And here the idea is that you write code that is delimited by triple backticks, just like in Markdown. And then you say which program language. And here we say main print world. And then you have to finish the, the code block with triple backticks. It's important that um, only text boxes that have that start and end with these uh, triple backticks are recognized. You cannot add code blocks in the middle of, of your text. And again, if I now run the code syntax uh, colorize slide, it will find the specific entry and then replace it. And it looks a little bit better if we resize the shape to fit the text. So if I now go again and uh, change the code, let's say add another line. You can see that initially it doesn't change, it doesn't do the colors correctly, but using the background color of your text box, it will automatically color your your code correctly again if you run the add-on again. Um, let's just for completeness sake add another text box for a different um, for a different language. Let's say Python and. Uh, and here we can again write some code. Again, make sure that you start and end with the triple backticks. And now we can then colorize this case on the whole document and it will find it Let's do again the resize. And this way you can have code in different languages. If you don't provide a if you don't provide a, a a language, a programming language, or you have the, so if you have the wrong programming language, let's say we, we add a programming language that uh, that uh, the add-on doesn't recognize, then the add-on will not will not change that text. The idea being that you want to potentially uh, you don't want to get the impression that it highlighted the wrong way, and you need to fix that. So one way of fixing is that to just say well there isn't a language. So in this case, I will. Just say well, color is at, as 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 tech as code like thingy, but uh, but no no coloring. And the other one is yes, that's that's primarily what you want to do. You can also then, and that leads us to the next uh, menu item, which is change mode two. If your cursor is in one of these code blocks and you use the change mode two functionality, you can ask um, the add-on to to change the the, the program language. So in this case, we just forgot or we didn't add the correct language, so the shell. But it also can be useful to to just see potentially what other languages would look like using that highlighter. And and also it can work for languages that the add-on just doesn't recognize, in which case you can try to see which, which of the existing ones works best with your with your code. Um, the Add-on change uh, change mode two doesn't do anything if you are not inside a, an already recognized code segment. So don't be alarmed if nothing happens. Finally, we also have a way of of 
how syntax how you encode that is in the middle of your text. So let's say, for instance, uh, I want to have a, a first line that isn't starting with a that isn't starting with the code. First line, and now if I write, uh, um, let's say, C, why not? And then I can say have a world here. And let's just finish that. So here I didn't start with triple back ticks, and I, obviously if I just now call colorize the slide, it will not do anything. It, didn't, it doesn't recognize anything here. But if I now select the text and ask it to colorize the selection and see, it will do this correctly. The advantage of, of this using this mode is clearly that you can have it in the middle of your, of your text box. The disadvantage is that if I now change the code here, the same way I did the same way I did before. Well, it will not colorize, it will not have the right colors by default. And if I now run colorize in the whole document, it will not fix it up because it doesn't remember that this was C. So you will need to go back and select this again, and then you can select uh, you can colorize the selection again as as for instance C. So I hope uh, this gave you an idea of the features of this add-on and how to use it. If you're missing languages or see other issues, please contact me and uh, enjoy.